Welcome to part two of my collaboration with Janine from My Arty Heart. Now Janine and I have swapped backgrounds and in this video I'm going to show you what I did with the backgrounds she sent me and she's got a video on her channel that shows what she did with the background I sent her. And hopefully you've already seen how we made those backgrounds as we put the videos part one up last week. So if you did miss those or perhaps it's your first time here, then I've linked them up in the description below. So what you're seeing in front of you is the collection of goodies that Janine sent me. So not only did she send me her background to work on, but she also sent me a lot of other lovely stuff as well, including some of her doodles. And I'd seen her doodles over on her channel and I was really pleased to get my hands on some of them. And she sent me some of them as stickers as well, which is so cool. So thank you, Janine. Now she sells her doodles over in her Etsy shop and I've linked that as well in the description. So you know the score, you just click on the show more button or the triangle if you're on mobile and you'll find a description with everything you need to know in there. Plus a list of everything I've used to make this project today. Oh, and the video links. Don't forget the video links. So this is what I did with Janine's gorgeous background. Okay, so for my project, now I was thinking and sorting through all the lovely bits and bobs that she sent me and I decided that I didn't really want to cover up the background too much. So I thought it was just too nice. So whatever I do, I'd have to let that background shine through. And that was kind of my main thought on this. So I also decided to save a lot of the bits and the bobs and those lovely doodles and stickers for some other projects and do something big on that main background. And I was thinking along the lines of perhaps a big flower or something floral, but I was, as I was looking at that background and trying to work out which way round I wanted to, to position it, and start working on it, there was a, a little voice in my head that said faces. And the voice kind of got louder, so that by the time I set about adding my first marks to that page, I, it was the only thing that I was thinking about. And I could see a face looking out at me in that top left-hand quadrant. I have to admit that I was a little nervous working on this lovely background and just in case I messed it up. So I'm using a white Stablio all pencil, which if the worst comes to the worst, I can always just wash it out with water. Once I had the basic shapes down in the white, I decided to just continue with the Stablio pencils. So I used brown and black to add some shading to the faces and start filling out the details a little bit more. And the good thing about these pencils are they are strong enough so that you can see them on a strong background, but translucent enough that you're not completely covering that background up. And that's exactly what I wanted, really. And as I work, you'll see that I'll also add in some ink tents pencils. And I've got a blue and a red that I've added in to this project. Now, if I'd had blue and red in the Stablio all, then I probably would have just stuck with those. But as I didn't and I wanted to add other colours in, I reached for my ink tents. Now, they're not quite as strong as the Stablio all, but they are still a really lovely intense colour and more intense than a normal watercolour pencil. I'm going to use some gesso to block out behind the ladies' heads. Gesso, I'm using that for this because it's particularly good at letting backgrounds kind of peek through, as I'm sure you know when you use it too. And it just lightly knocks back and slightly tones it down so that you can get a good contrast. And I want a nice contrast for my foreground images to just sort of pop out of the page. But I didn't want the gesso to be too white. So I've added a very light tint to it with the Ink Tense pencil colour and I've picked the colours that I think would work well with the page.
As some of you already know, I used to run a weekly face art collective called Show Your Face. Do you remember that? So it used to go up every week over on my website and people could link up their face artwork and then visit other people's artwork for that week and, you know, just share some lovely inspiration. I don't run it anymore, but people have been asking me about my face artwork and the video I was part of with the Craft Stamper magazine a few years back. So for you guys who were fans of that and for my new followers who are into their face artwork and drawing faces, I'm working on some face artwork tutorials at the moment, so don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss when I launch those. And I really appreciate any likes and shares of my videos here on YouTube. It hugely helps me to just keep going and keep posting stuff. And don't forget to go and visit Janine as well at My Arty Heart to give her some YouTube love too. It seems totally fitting that I should use this perfect little heart which was in the package that Janine sent me. I mean, it just works so well, don't you think? And I think it's totally fitting as well that from an arty collaboration we should have two arty sisters. Go watch Janine's video now, send her some arty love and I will be back with you in my usual art slot on Sunday. So I'll see you then and thank you for watching.